I have roots here in the Hudson Valley. I went to school at SUNY New Paltz, and I became an activist at SUNY New Paltz, um, carrying on my work in conservation and working together with Kurt and others to create an album called Save the Mountain. And that's what Barry was talking about earlier. It was uh, an album that we produced and I sang on it. And Kurt did a bunch of playing on it. And our friend Michael Klein also co-produced it with him. Um, anyway, I have continued my work in conservation and specifically doing a lot of work with um, writing songs about endangered species to educate especially children, but also everyone, about species that we're losing and how the interdependence um, between animals and people and all creatures is so important to understand. So, um, but I'm gonna first get started with a song that I like to start a lot of my sets with that is just about getting to know someone better, getting to know you all better. It's called What Makes You. So I think I'm going to settle on in front of. <laughs> um, hang on. There we go. Uh, so I like to kind of um, go with the flow. 
flow on my songs. I have a group of songs and I'm kind of just going to decide as I go along. But I am going to play next this first song that kind of kicked off my series of songs on endangered species. And the song was inspired by a prompt that I got. Um, there are songwriting groups that we have in Nashville. People, we do it, people do it all over the country. Barry was just telling me about a songwriter group. And so um, the song prompt for this group of people was to write a song with the word dragon in it. I was like, hmm, okay, dragon. And at the time, it was on my heart to write a song about how I felt about the environment and climate change and what was going on in our world with that. So I somehow, through some research, figured out a way to combine those two things. And this is the song. And it's got a chorus that's pretty singable. So if you decide you want to sing the chorus, uh, please do.
the direction of this poster right here. I know you're all very giving people, and um, this is a great cause that Barry's got going, helping musicians uh, develop their talent. Um, so what my project is doing is creating uh, short documentaries around different endangered species, teaching people um, about them, and also bringing the material into schools, museums, state parks, and hopefully also uh, developing a program where kids can write songs about animals, draw pictures about animals, and have them uh, use their own creativity while learning more about conservation. So if you're interested in helping us uh, develop this program, make our first short documentary, there's a scan code right there and it's tax deductible donations through our fiscal sponsor, the Arts and Business Council of Greater Nashville. So that's my pitch. There's also some cards there you can take. Uh, so this next song is kind of the theme song that we developed for the project overall, and it's called Who Speaks for Earth? And this one kind of combines a bunch of different animals together, some of which are still thriving, some of which really need our help. There's a fox hunting the woods tonight to feed the kids in her den. There's an owl who soars in the moonlight over the nest she defends. A polar bear walks on Arctic ice that's growing ever so thin.
with a song about an animal that uh, a lot of us live with every day. And uh, I myself are, am a cat person, but many, many of my friends are dog people, including my friends Cheryl and Kurt here. They have a lovely dog, a golden named, what's your dog's name? Greenhill. Greenhill. Um, so I lived on a block and I had some neighbors who had a wonderful dog named Merle. And Merle could not be kept behind the fence, uh, behind the house. He just would dig his way out no matter what. He was a hound dog. and. Um, we lived on a little quiet dead end street. And uh, Merle was kind of the ambassador. He would greet new people as they came to visit and uh, everybody knew Merle. So this song is called The Mayor of Oxford Street. I think I'm just gonna finger pick this one so it might need a little more volume, I don't know. Was sitting on the lawn when we pulled up, checking our credentials, sniffing out our U-Haul truck, moving slow in the summer heat. Was the mayor of Oxford Street? He's a welcoming committee on four feet. The most friendly public servant you ever want to meet. All is well when he's on the beat. He's the mayor of Oxford Street. Shaking hands. Licking babies when he's not chasing cars down the road. He's a hip with the ladies to the guys. He's a pal and a regular joke. Every time we have a party on the block. Standing guard beneath the tables, he doesn't miss a drop, always there to keep things neat. He's the mayor of Oxford Street, shaking hands, licking babies when he's cars down the road. He's a hit with the ladies. To the guys, he's a pal and a regular Joe. Now the fur around his muscles turning white. But his tail still gets to wagging. When anyone comes by, don't forget to bring a treat for the mayor of Oxford Street. He's the mayor of Oxford Street. my set has been devoted to animals and I, <laughs> it's not always like that but tonight uh, just happens to be that way um, the first in the series of short films that we are raising money and applying for grants and so forth to produce is um, is about the, the bald eagle and the reason we picked the bald eagle is because the bald eagle was a success story 
It's an animal that came near to extinction, many people might be aware, back in the 1970s. And due to the fact that people uh, like Rachel Carson uh, made uh, sounded alarms and got the government to ban DDT, which also led to the ESA, the Endangered Species Act. So um, we want to put together a, a short film that's kind of going to be based on this song, but it's also going to educate people about how we had that, how we did that. And we think everyone can relate to the bald eagle because it is the symbol of our country and it is also a symbol of spirituality for an indigenous uh, populations. So, let me make sure I'm in tune for this. This song can be heard on my website, juliegrower.com. It's called Second Chances. And if you go to the website and go to the music page, you'll hear a much more produced, rocked out version of this song than what I'm about to play you. <laughs> This one will give you a little bit of an idea of the song. It's called Second Chances. Again, as we mentioned earlier, we worked on the Save the Mountain album together years ago. And we're brought back together by uh, our friend Michael Klein, who, and Ann Kurt, who organized an anniversary of that album. Anyway, um, it's kind of appropriate because this is a song that I wrote when I started writing, back when I lived in New Paltz. I'm going to take a quick sip. Thank you, Barry. 
for having me tonight. Um, it's been really great to play for you guys, come and see me during the break. Um, so this song was started on, the, on a front porch of a house on Church Street in uh, New Paltz, New York, and uh, later finished up with the help of um, one of the songwriters that I met in Nashville who helped me come up with kind of an idea for the bridge. And uh, we're going to hear the beautiful tones of Kurt Henry on this one. The heat waves breaking, here comes the storm. away my working day's sweat got a paycheck in my pocket gonna help me forget maybe sit down on the front porch rock away from night maybe take a walk downtown where some tunes will set me these clouds been getting heavy. They're just waiting to burst loose. And the sun's been hiding out all day. Ain't giving out no juice. You know, I work so hard all day. These bills won't go away. And that